the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. I mean, you can't go, how, do you think, for example, you don't think 400 years of slavery that the church was just just there and, and, and said nothing about it, or that the church had no role to play in it, and yet we know it did. Those people's opinions, you know, stretch, spread into that, right? The, the permission to hate, the permission to abuse, the permission to rape, all that stuff, the church either sat silent or the church was implicit about it. See how people use the, the, the they can use it to yeah. use the I, 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 to be perfectly honest, I can't fault Christians too much back in that time. And the reason I said that is because even even those who were with Christ here, you know, but and it took the Holy Spirit for them to step out and be bold about their ministry. And even then they still avoided conflict unless unless the Holy Spirit told them to go do a, a certain thing a right. certain way so right. I can't really fault those Christians I do know that somebody helped us <laughs> some you know, some the Quakers the Quakers okay yeah. so so you know and, and and I do know that there there were some people some Caucasian people that just tried to to be reasonable you know, to a certain extent. So, you know, I, it's it's a it's a big thing. The, the you know those 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 who were cruel and uh, unjust, they they are being held accountable. Yeah. You know, and it, and and just because of my uh, my ancestors, you know, it, it does affect me in a certain way you know and, and i do have certain feelings about it but as long as my eye is on christ yeah and keep moving forward without that affecting me afflicting me per, you know feeling persecuted or, or anything else so i gotta stay focused on christ to get me past all that when that comes up and, and that's my point as long as we stay focused on Jesus Christ, then this world and this world system does not affect us or move us or or, or gets us down the, the 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 wide road. It keeps us in that narrow road. And if like a horse, if you got those blinders on, you go forward. <laughs> You're yeah. not moving what's on the right and what's on the left. You're focused on what's forward, what what's what's the terrain that's before you. Even if you have to steer left or right, you're still only concerned with what is before you. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, I do I do. I think the question is just when with it's it's just if you're uh, if you're administering it, this you need to know what's impacting your ministry. It's, it's, you see what I'm saying, if one there's one form where you actually focusing and studying on the word of God. But when you're going out and ministering the gospel, when he, he did call and go preach the gospel, right? You, that's that's the calling, isn't it? To, to go preach the gospel. For every every belief. Yeah. The moment that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you are a minister of reconciliation. Exactly. And what you what you find whether you're a, 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 a prophet down to the person who cleans the toilet inside of the, <laughs> the sanctuary. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that volunteering to do that because if you don't clean it, 
who gonna be in that church? Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's part of the and everything. So exactly. just like the bot, there's parts that are, you know, you know, for show and there's parts that's not to be seen. Right. You know, but there's, there's great parts and there's you know, lower parts that but if without those parts you're not whole. Come so uh but I I, I I just want to make it known that it is every believer's ministry, meaning it is your, it is it is the the least. Yeah. You for God is go out and share the yeah. gospel. They share the gospel. Everyone, everyone has a gospel story because it is the gospel that got you saved. Exactly. It is that Jesus Christ died for your sins and yeah. that he was on the third day. That is the gospel. And that is what that that particular word is the faith that was needed for your spirit to be changed in a twinkling of an eye yeah. from a separated spirit to a regenerated spirit that is connected to our God. Yeah, yeah. So, taste the word of God to get you saved and you knew what that word was because you spoke that word and you believed that word to become saved. And right. if all you have is that, that is your ministry and you share that. I remember the moment I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I immediately had so much joy, so much freedom, so much, you know, my burden was just removed. And I'm talking about at a young age, I couldn't wait to tell somebody, I'm saved. Amen. I had to tell somebody. Right. You know, and it, it just didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't happen, you know. Uh, uh, with a whole congregation, right? You know, what I'm I, I did, it didn't, it, it, this didn't happen with a church full of people that you know. I heard a message, somebody invited me to church, I heard a message, and then I gave my life. That that wasn't how I got saved, right? You no, know, there was very, there, there, there was, there was, when I was a little boy, I heard someone tearing over. At the, at the altar, so-called altar, you know, on a Saturday. Right. One of the mothers of the church had her child at the, at the altar just crying out for Jesus Christ, and I heard that. And it drew me in the church, because I live like three houses up and, and across the street from the church that we attended. Uh -huh. and, and the park, which was the school, was at the end of the cul-de-sac, and I was heading there. So I had to pass the church. And I heard that, and I knew it was a Saturday, and I knew that normally on Saturdays that church ain't rocking like it normally be rocking. So it drew me in, and I went in there, and I and, and it just everything about that situation drew me in. The the wow. the, the goodness of it, the strangeness, the, the out of place of it, which is what Christ really is. So it pulled me in, and. They welcomed me. She welcomed me up to the altar, and all I did was repeat what this young brother that was around my age did, and I just started crying out to God. And I remember my life changed, <laughs> you know, at, at some point, but not being taught who I was. Right. It actually happened after that. You know, uh, uh, that change began to fade away and this world started taking over again. Yeah. But the moment that I gave myself, I was in the car by myself. Okay, amen, amen. Uh, and God spoke to me. And uh, actually before that, okay. in the midst, in the midst of, of, of sitting there partying with a bunch of folks, getting high, drinking, I mean, in the midst of all that, right. God spoke to me, Woo. and like audible. And I'm talking about not even yourself. You just you're 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 on the street. You got a bunch of people. It's like 
at least 10 people around, drinking, getting high, smoking cigarettes, you know, uh, secular music playing loud, and you're all just out there just, just hanging out. I mean, God just silences all that to where it's like muffled, and then you hear your life is in jeopardy. You choose me, or you're either going to jail or you're going to die. And that's where you're, that's, that's the road you're going down. Amen. Or you accept me. And man, and, I, and it was like a numbness over me. And I just got in my car. And I immediately was sober at that moment. And I remember driving down the hill and God was just showing me what my life would be like if I didn't accept him. And I just gave my life to Christ. Amen. So I was driving in the car. And I remember the tears and the snot and the <laughs> just rolling down my face as I was thanking God for saving me because I knew that that's who it was and that my life was changed and that the destiny that was before me had been altered to one that was godly. And my life has been that way ever since. Now, I'm not saying that it was this, you know, constant climb in Christ. No, there was plateaus, there was, there was even some dips. You know, involved right. in that. But through all that, I am where I am, and I am what I am because mm. the knowledge stopped yeah. coming in. And God, right. I've never spoken to me and showing me things about my life to keep me reminded of my commitment to Him, my 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 uh, covenant with Him. And so, God has watched over me all that time. Mm. And he, I was ignorant of his will. Right. In other words, he, he, he kept me. But I tell you what, that day when I was in that car, when it was all said and done, when the trials and tribulations in that moment happened right after I received Christ as my Lord and Savior, of course the enemy was right there. You know, because some people from the other part of the hood, we just... I ended up being in that part of town just because I was praising God and not paying attention to where I was going. Then here's a car full of four deep people that, you know, working with me. They all seem to be looking at me, all of them in that car. I can see my mind as I'm driving down the street and they're coming toward me. And it's like, whoop. In my mind, back of my mind, I'm like, why are they all noticing me as I'm driving down the street? Amen. The devil said, are you going to continue praising God? Woo. Or are you hard like you need to be for this moment with these guys? You're going to wipe your face and clear up. Right. And when I make that choice, that I don't, I don't care, I'm just going to keep on praising God. And it was like we just passed each other and nothing happened. And all that weight just left, and I knew without a shadow of doubt at that moment that that was it. Amen. We moved out on, and I couldn't wait to tell somebody. Somebody, right? I went straight to my sister's house and busted in the door. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying. Right. And and when they didn't respond, you know, with the response that I, you know, the way I came. I was okay. like, I got to go tell my mom. So I had to drive all the way back up the hill. And when I busted in that door, I said, Mom, guess what? He said, my baby saved. That messed me up. That messed me up. Because she was like, I've been praying I'm for like, How the world does she know? <laughs> she could tell. That, she could tell. Yeah, that, that, that was that day. And, uh, and it was exciting. You know, I, like I said, that was my ministry to tell people that I'm saying I told my dad uh, that I'm saved and uh, now I'm not saying that me telling him that changed his life because he grew up his mom was a pastor okay of a church. his dad went to church all the time not saying that that would affect him because he left home at a, at a at a young age but he knew about the church right. but he went to church as far as I was you know me growing up I've uh -huh. never seen and then he 
it wasn't a few weeks later he gave his life and started going to church you know and i don't know if it is me testifying that i'm saved and god saved me and that i'm not you know out there running the streets and stuff anymore but i do i do remember seeing the look on his face when i told him that right because when when i was so happy to see him and tell him he thought i was high <laughs> So he looked at me like he always looked at me. <laughs> like, like, you high, boy. What, what, what are you talking about? You, you saying, you know, what, what angle are you coming at me to get what you, what do you want, basically? Exactly, exactly. But then when he actually saw that it was real, you know, it, it baffled him. Hmm. And so uh, I still, I mean, those moments are vivid in my mind. And uh, glory to God, I was able to, to see that man give his life to God. And, and it wasn't a year later that, you know, he, he, he was killed. You oh. know, but he you know, you know, from the life that he lead, that's who was in Yeah, and, and you know, I like the fact is that he, I'm pretty sure, like I said, you, you influenced him as they started working in the church and, you know, doing work for the ministry, right? He was doing the camera thing, right? He was serving the Lord. You yeah. know? Now the question I have though, is, I don't I, I guess you don't must you must don't run across as much as I. Uh when I'm witnessing, you know, because I've you know I've been in the ministry for a while now, for a minute. Just like when you was doing it. Uh so when I when I have like I had a conversation with a brother by text the other day. I want to read this and see how you respond to, to his message. I showed him that video you were talking about, right? Uh -huh. And he said, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. One second. Uh, I'm going to just read what he said. He said, sounds good. Wait, let me take that right. Let me get spirituality here. Means nothing. That's something negative. Okay. I just want to put it out with you. Let's see how you respond to it. Uh, his question was, if one tells others about their God, they must accept and respect what others tell about them, about their God, about questions. I read it here. Did you hear, you hear what I said? Let me, let me make sure. So if one, if a person tells someone else about their God, then the person that was told about their God must believe. Or must respect. They, I think he said. Must, what must they say about their God. Yeah. yeah. Without question. Okay. You can't say without question. <laughs> he said, he said, yeah. Uh, why is he telling? <laughs> I know. What, that, why is he telling? Is he telling them for information? I, I responded, said, you mean don't ask for understanding? Like if you tell me about your God, you're saying is that I shouldn't ask for. Understanding.